I thought this would be a top of the table clash at the start of the season. It's Leipzig at minus 125. A lot of people would be thinking, oh, Leverkusen at plus 325 at the visitors. Just get on Leipzig. The draw is gigantic at plus 310 if Leverkusen turn up. Over three at minus 120 tells you everything you need to know. But, Kev, can you get behind Leverkusen? Home or away or any time they put their feet on a football pitch at the moment? No, absolutely not. Um, this is a great example of what we were talking about earlier on when it comes to the anytime goal scorer market. Because if you've got a game where you think Leipzig are going to win, which I do, I do think they'll win. They've won all six at home since Marco Rosa took charge. They've beaten um, some good sides as well. They've beaten Dortmund. They've beaten... Uh, Real Madrid in midweek. They've scored at least three goals in all six of those wins. So I think Leipzig are going to win and they're going to score goals. You could double that up, of course. You could say, I'll go with Leipzig to score and maybe over two and a half, something like that. But I just think, well, who's going to score those goals if Leipzig do well? And I wouldn't put anybody off looking at guys like Timo Werner, who I think is looking sharp, scored the winner ultimately against Real Madrid in midweek. Obviously, Nkunku, I'm a huge fan of. And I, I just think, until the market catches up with him, I just think it's a case of keeping on backing him, to be honest. Leverkusen, look, Leverkusen have good players. No doubt about it. But they're so fragile. And Xabi Alonso's gone in there. The intention is to make them more solid. The intention is to make them work harder. I get that. But I don't think he's truly going to be able to get any kind of ideas across consistently until he has the, the winter break. And I think in the, until that happens, they're kind of going game to game, hoping that they're going to improve. I think there have been some signs where they're working harder. But look at the game in midweek against Atletico. Twice in front, couldn't see it through, nearly lost the game. You look at the game against Wolfsburg last weekend. Um, we were on Wolfsburg, odds against, double chance, because we couldn't believe how short Leverkusen were. And... Wolfsburg scored the first goal, having not had a goal attempt on target. It was Robert Andrich with an own goal. And then Tapsoba, for no reason whatsoever, gives away a clumsy penalty. So Leverkusen are just shooting themselves in the foot at the moment. I don't rate the goalkeeper. You guys know that. I think Lukas Radetzky is, is not good enough for a club of their ambition. He admits he's making lots of mistakes. And I just don't see how Leverkusen are going to be able to, to compete here, really. But they do have good players. So what I'd rather do is just in case Leipzig are a little bit off it and Leverkusen do click and have a really good game. Fine, I'll just stick with Nkunku. If he scores and Leipzig lose 3-2, we don't care. What price is he? Uh, he's about 150, I think. So how um, comes he scores most weeks, especially if you uh, you select him, that the books have not, not like... I'll tell you why. We i tell you why I think it is. I, I've been thinking about this a lot because it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Stinch knows this. We talk about this a lot, about why it hasn't quite adjusted. I wonder if partially it's because he's not a striker per se. I wonder if that feeds into it because he's very unusual. He's this kind of hybrid. If you look at a lot of his early time uh, with um, Leipzig, He's actually moved further forward as he's gone on. So at Paris, he was kind of an attacking midfielder, uh, although he didn't play a huge amount for them anyway. At Leipzig, he's been a wide wide forward, sometimes an attacking midfielder. It was only really under Jesse Marsh last season, at the start of the season, that he was moulded into a genuine centre forward. And since Marco Rose has gone there, again, he's moved him a little bit wider and that's the only thing I can think of, because if this was a striker scoring as consistently as he does, I can't imagine you'd have those prices. But what you tend to find is that you will look at the list and it'll go Timo Werner, maybe even Andre Silva sometimes, and then Nkunku comes below them. So the only thing I can think of is that the books don't see him as a genuine centre forward. But anybody who's watched him play for Leipzig knows he doesn't need to be. No, and, and to be honest, out of them three as an old scout, um, an ID scout as well, not just to obviously... Uh, he's got the better uh, guns or the better equipment 
to go and score any time over Werner and Silva for me because he's got the pace, he's got intelligence, and he's quite calm in front of goal as well. Stinch, the problem I've got here with Leverkusen is they're so disjointed. They are, for me, they're quite weak through midfield. And when because they've been getting beat, they've almost, my first thought is to take a step back. You take a step back against Leipzig, they'll be on you. Yeah, the other thing going on, Kunku is on penalties as well. So if you're having an anytime goal scorer bet, you always got a little bit more value in your pocket if you know your player's going to be on penalties. Um, yeah, you just can't you just can't trust Leverkusen at all to to put in a, a consistent performance across 90 minutes. I feel um, Xavi Alonso has had a, a really tricky fixture list to to navigate. Yes, his first game was at home to Schalke and they won four 0 but you know most teams are beating Schalke at the moment, but you know, then they came up against Porto, Frankfurt, Wolfsburg and Atletico. You can see at least two goals in all of them. Heavy defeats against Porto and Frankfurt. And for me, the other thing that is, that is massively uh, against Leverkusen is their complete lack of discipline. You know, it's almost every game they're getting three, four, five players booked. Um, the, the, the left centre-back sometimes plays left-back. Uh, Kev will correct the pronunciation, but Hin- Hincapi, the, the South American... Oh, Hincapi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Accident yeah, back. it's probably not. It's, it's, strange. it's probably not Hincapi, but he just, uh, he loves it. He loves just correcting everyone on every name. Well, that's what, what he you, says. Stinch, what did you call him? I uh, just see what I said. Just uh, see, uh, say what, what you see, right? Hincapi. Yeah, there you go. Is it Hincapi, is it, Kev? No, no I don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, there you go. But yeah, oh, yeah. Like, honestly, sure. if you could if you could bet on individual player to be booked, I would check him out. Um, uh, Kev's mentioned the goalkeeper; he got booked uh, before the hour mark for wasting time um, against Atletico Madrid, um, which just shows to show that like a complete lack of plan, really, if they're wasting time that early on in a game. And you know, the Javi Alonso appointment very reminiscent of uh, it feels a little bit like the appointment of, of Van Bommel uh, last season. Uh, for, for Wolfsburg and we were very anti Wolfsburg as a result of that and he lost his job quite quickly I don't know if it was going to go the same way as Alonso but he is a very inexperienced coach and, and wow you know Kev mentioned uh, Leipzig's uh, record particularly at home under Rosa six wins in a row and in all of those games they've scored at least three goals so if you're scoring three goals it's going to be very hard uh, for Leverkusen to get anything out of the game so I've just tried to keep things really straightforward and, and bat Leipzig. I um, last time I was on, I, I bat Leipzig and they lost four nil against Frankfurt. So I hope my uh, I hope different my Leipzig. Leipzig now, though. To be honest, Mark. Yes, it just feels yeah. so strange saying Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I agree, Mister Watson. So I'm hope I'm hoping that uh, Leipzig are going to be a bit more kind to me this time. The last time I heard Mister Watson, and I was standing in the dock saying, "Not guilty, Your Honour." Um, Incentive here, though, Kev. You know, if they win and the results go for them, they're going to be fifth. And they've had a dismal start to the season. Um, I can only see Leipzig winning this game. And by the way, if you like your yellow cards, then um, why don't you maybe go for uh, any time yellow for Incapié? Is it Incapié? Did I say Incapié. that? Incapié, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, he he has got great talent. There's no question. I, I mean, he is one of those South American kids that they've brought in and he's had games where you've thought, wow, OK, there's definitely something there. But he's, what, 20, 21? He's going to make mistakes. And, you know, he's part of a dysfunctional team that's putting him in situations where he's under extreme pressure. So I don't think he's a bad player. I just think he's a player that makes bad decisions at the moment. And that's part of a of a defence that isn't playing well. I think you look at all the individuals. Tapsoba is a player that's been linked with Arsenal. He's been linked with other Premier League clubs. He's not a bad defender. He, he was a very good defender when he first arrived. The problem is he's lost his confidence and he's part of a unit that isn't playing well. And the goalkeeper behind him is not particularly commanding. So what you're getting is a situation where these guys, Tar, Incapier, Tapsoba... They're all constantly being put in situations where they're under duress. Yeah, and also he does. He has no front screen protection as well from midfield because they're all over the, the shop. It's almost like you've got a load of jelly beans and you've just thrown them and it's like, yeah, try and link that up. This chain is not, not together. Uh, and also there's too many weak links um, during games. Uh, on paper, before the game, you're like, my God, Leverkusen are like a match for anybody on their day. 10 minutes into the game, you can see why they're, they're struggling because they all bomb forward. No, like 
but yeah, the midget gems. That's what I used to uh, say. Okay, let's have a little look at the official picks because we've all got a view on this, and I think we've all found good value. And Kunku, anytime goal scorer at plus one fifty. Uh, Stinch basically Kev sends a little letter to the family to congratulate them even prior to the game that their son is going to be scoring. Leipzig money line at minus one twenty five for Leipz uh, just to, for Leipzig to win. And for me, I've gone Leipzig half time, full time at massive plus one seventy five. Um, I've even seen Leipzig to score or over two and a half, around plus 200. Um, Jojo says, can't see Leverkusen winning here. Well, let's hope that's right, but let's hope that Leipzig are up very, very early. There was another one as well. Oh, um, Arnold from Papua New Guinea. Welcome. I hope you enjoy it and make sure we want to see you in the chat a little bit more often. So anyway, it's Leipzig all the way for us. In Kunku scores, Leipzig 2-0 up at half time, and we absolutely cruise to the winning line. 